So the losses that you reported last night were uh, narrower than the street had been expecting. Better numbers on a lot of fronts, and that's why the stock's up by about 4% this morning. Um, let's talk a little bit about the losses, though. Smaller than anticipated, but you also said that costs were a little harder to control in some areas than others on the conference call. What, what were you talking about? Well, Where I think are those we're, areas? we're still growing so quickly. So um, some of that is one-off charges last quarter related to the uh, to the listing process itself. Mm -hmm. But the pace of office openings is pretty intense, and there's capex build out associated with that. We opened in Munich and Paris. Uh, our 50-person Tokyo office wasn't quite enough to service our excellent business in Japan. So we're opening in Osaka. So there's a lot of stuff like that, and we're not trying to. Um, to tie those to quarterly boundaries, and we're trying to grow the business as quickly as we can. Okay, so that, that's actually a good thing to not yes, be absolutely. too focused on what's happening quarter to quarter. Look at the longer term. Uh, do you feel like you get enough slack from your investors at this point to actually have that sort of leeway? Yeah, I mean, this is our second earnings as a public company. So, you know, until yesterday, people had one point. Now they have two, so you can start to draw a line. But I think it's going to take a while for uh, for people to really understand the story. We spent a lot of time with the analyst community, and I think that pays off. And we have some great institutional holders. But um, I think it's going to be another four, five, six quarters before people really understand the trajectory. Part of the questions had been, oh, sorry. Business growing at 60% year over year, which which is incredible. What I'm, I'm looking at the revenue. research here, Goldman revenue. Pardon me, revenue is growing 6%. But I'm looking at the research here. Goldman has has you at neutral. Credit Suisse has you at neutral. Price targets are just a bit above where you are now. So there's a healthy dose of skepticism. I suspect a lot of that has to do with your competition with Microsoft. How are you addressing that particular threat? I, you know, that's the thing that we need to spend the most time on, and probably the thing that I would like to spend the least time on, because it kind of you can think about these concentric circles of what's going on in the macro competition. Um, then there's the team, the company, organizational structure, bringing in the best executives, opening these offices, and then more than anything else, customers and the, and the product, the service that we're, we're delivering to them. Um, but we do need to address it because I think there's a lot of confusion really deliberately. Do, do they cheat on the numbers, really? I don't know. You know, what we said in the earnings call yesterday was. Uh, they announced uh, 20. 20 million. Um, it's a migration of users from Skype for Business. It, it comes if so. If they're on one thing, it looks like they're on Microsoft Team, but they're really not. Is that no, a no, fact? no? I think they they are using it. Uh, they're using it for something that's fundamentally different because okay. that uh, Skype for Business was rebranded from Link. Link had 100 million users five years. Is ago. the user experience that much better with with Slack? I don't. Yeah, I think it's fundamentally different. Here in, in the city, there are hundreds of thousands of people coming into the office this morning who check Slack first thing when they wake up. It's the last thing they check at night, and it kind of runs all of the workflows through the course of the day. And I think that's fundamentally different. I think one of the big questions people have had is how many big customers can you get? And I think you talked yesterday about how you have 50-plus customers who are spending a million dollars or more yeah. on those accounts. Um, what are you seeing in terms of growth in that arena and some of those big customers? And can you yeah. continue that pace? That's really a, a highlight of the quarter for us. So uh, 821 customers with $100,000 and up, and uh, of those, a little over 50 with a million dollars and up. In both cases, almost 70% growth year on year. So we're seeing some really big expansions. We're seeing really big new customer lands, and it's all over the world. So uh, Southeast Asia, Grab Taxi in Europe, Vodafone and GlaxoSmithKline. So these are obviously these are big companies, um, but significant expansion here as well. There was a great article published yesterday about uh, TD Ameritrade, 30% mm -hmm. reduction in the use of email after moving to Slack. So that's 30%. Um, TD Ameritrade is getting bought. Is that going to continue with Slack? Well, that's maybe, stay there that's with the why such a desirable Schwab. company. <laughs> <laughs> Stuart, no, but, but seriously, will, will you be able to maintain that and keep that when they come in and start consolidating with Charles Schwab? Um, yeah, I mean, yes, I hope so, because we've actually seen real success both with acquisitions and divestitures. I, we're not here yet, but what I would love to uh, have the world think is I, I'm a PE firm and I take some company private. These people aren't on Slack yet, so the first thing we've got to do is get them on Slack if we really want to transform how they, they operate. So, yes, I think that's, it's probably a good sign for us. So you are the new poster child for the direct listing. You bypassed the underwritten deal, the classical IPO. If you had to do it over again, would you do a direct listing again? Yeah, I mean, the real motivation for us was we came into the listing process with over $800 million in cash on the balance sheet, so the, we didn't need any to, to raise any more capital, which is obviously the point of a traditional IPO. Um, I think we'll see a lot of interesting evolution over the next couple of years. I know uh, IC just recently announced uh, the possibility to, to raise capital in a direct listing. Um, but there's a, you know, something that really hasn't transformed since this process was invented, um, and that's taking into account the way that information flows today. So you don't necessarily, uh, we worked with the bankers, and the bankers are actually great. They provide a lot of key help. But you don't need the bankers to disseminate information. You can just 
webcast stuff. You can publish things on the internet and they get out instantly. People don't have to wait till the paper publishes and they want to look up the stock prices. And in that world, I think um, the information asymmetries that are created can be really flattened out.